Welcome back to another Piano Expressive session. Let's use this session to look at another dynamic symbol that can add expression to our musical phrases. But first, check in with your posture, make sure your back is straight and your neck is long, your shoulders are relaxed, your feet are flat on the floor to give you stability, your forearms are angled down towards the keys or level with the keys, and at the end of those forearms you've got dome-shaped hands, strong curved fingers and those lovely relaxed wrists. You're also feeling positive, focused and relaxed and ready to concentrate on learning some new skills. We've been very busy and we're focused on all these things, making sure we've got those lovely relaxed wrists and flowing gestures, our imagination is engaged, we're moving smoothly between the keys and we're incorporating various techniques to shape our phrases and select tempos to create a character for our music that tells its story and fits in with its style. We're thinking about playing the music horizontally to move the phrases forward and we've made a combination of mezzo staccato and legato phrases. We've done very well. Today we're going to look at incorporating another dynamic symbol that can add life to our musical phrases. Here's a little tune for today entitled Bird's House. You can see from the words we've got someone building a birdhouse and then all the birds are flying in to take advantage of their new home. We've got the tempo indication moderately. Both hands are playing in the treble clef, so they'll be up here. We've got alternating playing again with our right hand starting, then our left, right, left and finishing off with our right. We've got gradually softer dynamic markings in our music, we've got a moderately loud. In our left hand we've got some legato slurs in bars 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and also in 7 and 8 for our right hand. And we've got a new symbol in the very first bar, SF. That's short for the Italian word sforzando, which means with force. And we're going to have a look at how to play sforzando in this particular musical phrase to add some real life to the start of our little tune. Let's decipher what's going on with the notes. We're starting off in the right hand and counting four beats in a bar. On C with our third finger. On beat one, and then a rest, and then again on beat three and then a rest. Let's talk about the SF. Sforzando or SF means with force, so we have to press quite deeply into that C key to make sure we're adding emphasis to that particular part of the tune. If you have a think about how that fits in with the words, someone is building a birdhouse, so perhaps this is the bang bang of the hammer. In our next bar, we've got G with our left hand and our third finger, three crotchets, one, two, three, and then a rest on beat four. And you can see we've got a decrescendo there, so they're getting gradually softer. You can also notice that as I'm pressing my keys in, I'm taking full advantage of the fact that we've got a nice mezzo staccato articulation because I'm repeating the same notes, so I'm really relaxing my wrists into those notes. In our next bar, bar three, we've got lots of C's again with our third finger. In fact, one on every beat. No sforzando this time, but again, maybe that's the repeated banging of the hammer. And then our next bar, still with the right hand, we're going down to the G on beat one, two, three, and a rest on four with a decrescendo in there as well. And then off on four. In our next bar, we've got some legatos and an MF sign, which is a little bit different from where our tune started. We're in the left hand, fourth finger on E, So we've got E followed by G and then two A's with your thumb and a legato slur all joined up. In the next bar we're going back to the E with our fourth finger and then the G and then the A for two beats because it's a minimum. And then in our last little part of our tune we're back to our right hand, we're playing E with our second finger. And we're going up to the G, back to the E on beat four, we're on D with our thumb, and then in the last bar, back to the E for two beats, and then finishing off on beat three with an E, 
and then a rest and a deep crescendo. I'll do that last little right hand part again. So we've deciphered and analysed what's going on with our notes and all of the other text on the page. Let's play through it slowly and get a sense of the story, the phrasing and how we're going to add some character to this little tune. just playing it through slowly like that that we've got two distinct parts to our little story we've got the building of the house and the banging and then in the second half maybe that's where the birds fly in and start to make their home so I would say that we've got two phrases the first one with the hammering and the second one with the birds let's have a look at how we're going to shape those phrases we'll do the hammering one first phrase one the composer's given us a little bit of an indication of how to bring some life and character into this music. We've got the sforzando to start with and then decrescendo with those in those G's in the second bar. Then we're going back to so maybe what I've decided to do and it's not written in the music is go back to an MF dynamic so moderately loud here and then decrescendo and that's the end of my phrase. So two sforzandos at the beginning. Decrescendo, moderately loud because we keep banging. And then decrescendo. I'll play that again. So that's our first phrase, the building of the house. And all I've done is really added my own little extra micro dynamic, an MF. In the second phrase, we've got all that lovely legato. And for my interpretation, I really don't think I need to do much else than what the composer's indicated there. Play it moderately loudly, so give it a little bit of emphasis as I'm pressing down those notes, and then in the end, just round off the phrase with a decrescendo. All in all, this is my interpretation of The Bird's House. pause and have a play and come up with your own interpretation of this little tune that tells its story and fits in with its style. Make sure you're focused and aware of all those different things that we've been talking about, lovely relaxed gestures, moving the music forward and creating a character for your little tune that tells its story. That's it for this session. Make sure that you have a think about what you've learned and become conscious of incorporating all of these ideas and techniques into the playing of other pieces in your piano repertoire. See you next time when we'll have a look at the slur.